Thank you. So we jointly uh, co-coordinate this uh, cluster one on resilience and climate change. Uh, this is the second year of uh, these meetings uh, under the water scarcity initiative. Uh, and uh, today's agenda is first we will start with a tour de table, then a, a quick update uh, from partners on activities on resilience and climate change. Then we will have a presentation of the newly launched FAO drought portal. Uh, time for discussion and, and closing. So without much delay, uh, we will start with the tour de table. I will go through the names uh, as I see them on the list of um, participants that I have in Zoom. So uh, we'll start with you, Hisham. <laughs> Thank you, Ziad. Uh, my name is Hisham Shariag. I am a program monitoring and reporting expert at uh, the FO Regional Office for the Near East and North Africa. I'm supporting the implementation of uh, the Water Scarcity Initiative team and also the coordination of uh, the Regional Water Collaborative Platform and the work of the working clusters. Thank you. Back to you, Ziad. Thank you, Hisham. Uh, next, we have Mohamed um, Abdullah from FAO. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, and then uh, our dear colleague, Mohammed Alhamdi. Yes, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, happy to be in, in the meeting. Uh, my name is Mohammed Alhamdi, and I'm the senior land and water officer at the regional office of FAO and delivery manager of the regional water scarcity initiative. Thank you, Zia. Thank you, Mohammed. Uh, Dr. Ragab? Uh, my, my name is Ragab Ragab, and uh, currently I am the president of the International Commission on Irrigation and Drainage. Thank you, Dr. Ragab. And we have uh, Eva from FAO. Good morning, everyone. My name is Eva Pack, uh, land and water officer. Uh, at the headquarters, London Boat Artificial in Rome. Nice welcome. to meet you. Welcome, everyone. Uh, Hiam, Hiam from Aksad. Hello, everyone. My name is Hiam Al Ashkar, GIS and Climate Change Expert in Water Resources Department. Nice to meet you all. Thank you, Hiam. And our colleague, Julie. Hello, everyone. How are you? My name is Julie Abu Arab. I'm a project coordination officer at ESQUA. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Uh, Maher, FAO Rome. Good morning, everyone. My name is Maher Salman. I'm the team lead of agriculture water management, at the land and water division in Rome. And I think the, the connection here is with drought because I, oh, we also lead uh, drought activities from HQs. Uh, in, in Rome, plus if I look at the cluster as resilience, I can add adaptation fund where we also coordinate from HQs. Excellent. Thank you, Maher. And next on my list, uh, Nisreen from AOAD. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Nisreen Laham from the Arab Organization for Agricultural Development. Uh, I work as um, an expert on agri food systems transformation at Cairo office and happy to join this uh, lovely team. Thank you. Okay, next, uh, Mr. Rafi Aini from Tunisia, you said, Hisham? Yes, from Tunisia. Yeah, good morning, colleagues. You heard me? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I am in Bonn, currently in Bonn for SB's uh, 58, so sorry for that. Uh, I had a double role. I am Rafi Kaini uh, from Ministry of Agriculture, Water Resources and Fisheries. Uh, I am a director uh, in charge of elaboration of uh, uh, water strategy uh, 2050. And also I am lead coordinator for African group of negotiators for agriculture. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rafi, for joining us from Bonn. Thank you. Uh, next on my list is uh, Rashid from Iqbal. Good morning. Uh, this is Rashid Zabul. I'm a climate uh, commodity specialist at Iqbal and uh, happy to join the, the team today. Thank you, Rashid. Welcome. Uh, next, Stanley Allen.
Stanley? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can now. Hi. Good morning, colleagues. My name is Stanley Allen. I'm a consultant for disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation with IOM Regional Office for Middle East and North Africa. That's clear, sir. Can you please repeat it more loud? Yes, of course. Um, my name is Stanley Allen. I'm a consultant for disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation with IOM's regional office for the Middle East and North Africa. Thank you, Stanley. Uh, next, uh, Dr. Tariq Sadiq from ESCO. Dr. Tariq. We can't hear you, Dr. Tariq. Okay, maybe there's an issue. Uh, let's move to Tariq Hassan from uh, UNICEF. Yes. Hello. Good morning, colleagues. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Sure, <laughs> I ahead. had to take it out of the station. My name is Tariq Sadiq. I'm climate change officer at ESQA. So I will keep the notebook now, I would say. Yeah, oh, okay. thanks. Thank you, Dr. Tariq. Uh, sorry, Tariq Hassan, UNICEF. Go ahead, Tariq. Yes, yes, thank you again. Uh, Tariq Hassan, climate change specialist with UNICEF in the regional office, MENA, here in Amman. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Tariq. Uh, Vinay? Uh, good morning, all. My name is Vinay Nangia. I'm research team leader for soil, water, and agronomy at ICADA. I'm based in Rabat, Morocco. I'm also co-coordinating working cluster two on improving water productivity with FAO. Thank you. Thank you, Vinay. So the... Um... Did I miss anyone, Hisham, on the list? Uh, yes, I think uh, Rashid. Rashid Zabul from Igba. Oh, okay, I'm sorry for that. Uh, it's, I, thought, uh, I did, he did. No, I yeah, did. It's, it's done, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we have everyone covered. We have everyone. Yeah. So if there's anyone new, just let me know and we'll give them the floor to introduce. So the uh, next section of the meeting is to share updates. Um, we had presentations of national focal points and we've and introduced uh, from Tunisia. We don't have anyone else, right? Uh, national focal point. So we'll we'll go and move on to uh, give five minutes, perhaps, for uh, focal points or uh, partners. Uh, there are updates, um, but we don't have anyone except for Tunisia, right? Yes, right. Uh, okay. So maybe we can uh, give the floor uh, to Mr. Rafi. Uh, for five, up to five minutes, if you would like to uh, present their work uh, on climate resilience and uh, climate change in Tunisia. Yeah, thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Just in a few words, uh, we are working in many roads now. Uh, as you know, uh, we are uh, working on our national adaptation plan food security. So uh, the first uh, sector is uh, water. Now we are working with FAO. Uh, we had uh, 1,000 million uh, from uh, GCF as readiness to elaborate our uh, national adaptation plan. Now we are, work we are working on it and uh, we need uh, uh, your support as experts from all, all uh, uh, issues uh, dealing with uh, with that, uh, as you know, uh, all countries must submit their uh, national adaptation plans to the, the secretariat. So uh, for for Tunisia, uh, we are working now for uh, uh, water footprint, and uh, uh, it's a huge. Uh, 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 a huge issue for us uh, because uh, we are in water scarcity now seven years uh, with drought and uh, the food security uh, now you know it's it's very hard for our uh, our farmers uh now uh, we are de dealing with the uh, water for drinking only now 
it's restricted to 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 drinking water. So as you know, food security now is caput, as, as the Italians colleagues said. So uh, we need uh, your support on this. If you want, we can we can try to send you our uh, uh, concept note uh, as delivered to GCF and uh, to to send you contacts uh, from uh, FAO Rome or FAO Tunis. And if uh, someone want to, to, to help, uh, welcome. Uh, we, we, we need your help on, on this. They're ready. Thank you very much. I, if I may get some clarity, you have a draft plan, uh, which is you've prepared a draft plan and you're looking for input into that or what stage is the plan at? No, now no, uh, as as you know, there is a concept not. Okay. Uh, in the concept not, we have three 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 uh, uh, issues and uh, or components. Uh, uh, we we start working with water. It, 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 uh, our uh, national adaptation plan is dealing with food security. Okay. So the first stage is water. We start with water. We we are now working on issues about water, uh, about footprint of water, uh, all all these issues uh, around around water. Uh, 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 you know, our objective is to ensure our food security. So uh, with FIU, uh, we are uh, wor working on it. And uh, with uh, these uh, uh, experts, uh, we need, uh, for example, how to deal with insurance for for our farmers, uh, loss and damage, and agriculture. Uh, all these issues, you, you know, it's uh, we need we need to 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 be pragmatic and also uh, paradigm shift to change not to 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 work uh, as as usual so that that's why uh, we need we need more 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 ideas from uh, from your side thank you okay. very much okay thank you i think uh, it's it's your luck that you're the only focal point in this meeting so you have the uh, attention of all of the organizations here uh, so uh, there yes, are, if you allow yes. me, uh, we have uh, another one from Algeria, uh, Mr. Ohusin. I hope I'm pronouncing uh, his name correctly. So maybe because we started with the national focal points, so maybe you can uh, continue yes. with him. Okay. Uh, let me first, I mean, see if there's any inputs or questions for, uh, regarding the Tunisian presentation, and then we can move to Mr. Ohusin to introduce himself. Yeah. Ziad, uh, maybe they can comment on. Yes, please go on. I, I missed it a little bit, but I understood maybe they would like to work on the impact of climate change on uh, agriculture. Is that correct? Or it was part uh, of uh, what's in the, uh, the planning in Tunisia? Is that correct? Or Yeah, it's, uh, you know, uh, climate change now uh, affects uh, Tunisian uh, uh production uh agricultural pro, uh, production and uh, even for for drinking water it becomes very hard for us so uh, uh, we are a hot spot as you as you know like like our uh, nina region uh, in, uh, all all the region in, in, in water scarcity so without water we can do anything so that's why we we uh, we focused on uh, uh, our national adaptation plan relating to uh, uh, food security. Yeah. Uh, but we have our, uh, we are uh, in process for elaborating our uh, water strategy uh, 2050 with uh, uh, an action plan. And then this action plan, we have, we, we, we have uh, 40, three projects with uh, 1,200 actions. 
So uh, half of these actions are dealing with the climate change and resilience. Okay, just what I, I want to say is that uh, really we at said we did the study on the impact of climate change on drought in, on Tunisia uh, and uh, on some crops. And really we found that the, uh, Tunisia is going, I mean, to have severe, it's, it's projected, I mean, for sure, I mean, projected to have uh, increase in the frequency of a drought event and in the severity. Sure. So this, and I guess this is clear. I mean, we, we already start to see that. And other thing, we did the study uh, with a joint study with ESCO and FAO on impact on uh, wheat, yeah, uh, yeah, rain feed sure. wheat, and uh, regate wheat, I guess, in, at Shabika, Shabika and other side, Janduba, I guess. And also there is a clear uh, projected reduction in the yield of uh, the wheat. Yeah. So we agree. Maybe we we can help on uh, preparing the adaptation plan, or I mean, uh, if you like, I mean, or uh, providing support of some. But uh, I know you already have the Hillex in Tunisia in Must uh, Tunisia. This uh, to provide uh, water during drought, but but we can discuss. I mean. Uh, other activity can be implemented, I mean, just to reduce the impact of climate change. Yeah, just just uh, allow, allow me, please, yes. uh, 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 to, to say something uh, I forgot to, to highlight. It. It's very important. Uh, we are working on the five or six uh, strategic um, production in agriculture. So, uh, with uh, pasture in Drangeland as a provider of uh, uh, milk and uh, meat. Um, the uh, olive, olive trees, water, and fisheries. So now we we know our our vulnerability on on those uh, uh, strategic uh, cultures. Or uh, so now we need. Uh, to go forward, how to deal with this, which kind of adaptation. We need the transformative adaptation. Uh, it's very important for us uh, to enhance our resilience and the resilience of our farmers. Thank you. Uh, I see uh, Vinny and then Maher, Vinny. Yeah, I just wanted to add that uh, Tunisia is really important hub for Ricardo's uh, resident agri-food system uh, program. And we have uh, a very big office and uh, you might be aware of the works that we do, but basically it's climate smart adaptation um, practices that we test there. And we have team of gender specialists, uh, scaling specialists, e economists, uh, forage specialists, all of them based in Tunisia. And uh, right next door in, in Morocco is our regional hub for rainfed agriculture research, where also we develop all these innovations. So after this call, I'll, I'll call the head of office, Ayman Frija, and, and tell him to touch base with you. And then you can take this conversation forward. So yeah, I think uh, Ikarda will be happy to collaborate with you on this uh, exercise. Thank you. Thank you, Vinny. Uh, Maher? In connection with drought, as I see the topic, actually just mentioned to colleagues in Tunisia that from the HQ side, we have a, a global drought program, of course, also funded by Jeff, in part uh, that covers 32 countries. Um, in uh, th those countries who, who have their national drought plans prepared already, and the program is to enable uh, the implementation of national drought plans. From the region, it happens that uh, Tunisia is one. Uh, so Tunisia is part of that project uh, uh, and that program, actually, because it has its national drought plan endorsed by the government. And as well as Algeria, by the way, I noticed that Algeria is joining. So these are the two countries in the program from the region, but this is a global program. I just also want to mention that Tunisia specifically 
um, we had uh, the Minister of Agriculture in New York, where we had a high level uh, event on yeah. uh, drought financing. So he was a guest there. So we had a follow up meeting with the, with the government, with the, with the minister himself, specifically on drought. I don't broaden it to resilience and climate change for this group. But I guess that's a line either for Tunisia or Algeria um, uh, uh, to see it from, from our program. So I think that's that's good to mention here. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Dr. Ragab. Uh, thank you, Ziad. I, uh, most of the Arab actually countries, they have a widening gap between water supply and the demand. And Tunisia is no exception. And the issue really when it comes to water is how to narrow the gap between water supply and demand. And uh, one uh, solution, of course, would be is to increase the water supply uh, through water harvesting uh, into mountain lakes. And they have been working in Tunisia in the early 2000s with the French. And we have been uh, doing some mountain lakes uh, structures to harvest water. Uh, in addition to, to that, we need to look at more efficient irrigation systems. And, and also we need to look at non-conventional water resources. And uh, Dr. Akisa Bahari was involved in the work that we did and she became a minister uh, recently and I've been working with her. And she was really, ex she is expert in the use of non-conventional water resources. Uh, at the same time, we, we need also to use non-conventional crops, crops that they are uh, tolerant to drought and salinity. And I have been working with, um, uh, my friend uh, Muhammad Hashisha uh, and uh, from Tunisia, and uh, we had a lot of work. And ICID can help a lot, but the problem is that Tunisia is not a member uh, of ICID. And I would encourage uh, Dr. Rafiq maybe to bring Tunisia to the to be a member to ICID, so they can benefit from all the expertise uh, that dedicated to the members or member countries. So uh, yeah, you, you can have a lot of experts to help you free of charge uh, as a member of ICID. And uh, I hope that you can uh, uh, proceed with getting Tunisia to be a member. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but before I leave, uh, I would like uh, Dr. Ziad to uh, introduce uh, a new uh, member, uh, Dr. Nargis uh, Zohrabi. Uh, representing ICID uh, women and gender uh, participation in agricultural water management. Management. She just joined us. Okay, thank you, Dr. Uh, maybe let me give the chance now uh, to um, Sir Hossein Zahir from Algeria. Okay. Bonjour, tout le monde. Bonjour. C'est M. Ohoussin Zahir du ministère de l'Hydraulique de l'Algérie. Donc, euh, je suis ravi d'être avec vous. Euh, concernant la question des changements climatiques ici en Algérie, elle se pose de la même façon que la, 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 les pays de, de la région. Je ne parle pas anglais ou arabe, je ne parle pas anglais, je ne parle pas anglais. 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 S'il vous plaît, Hicham. Donc, oui, euh, pas tout tout vous pouvez nous aider. <rire> Donc, euh, comme j'ai dit, la question des changements climatiques se pose ici en Algérie, euh, à l'instar de tous les pays de la région Mina. C'est-à-dire, les impacts, ils sont visibles actuellement. De, 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 les évaluations qui, qui ont été faites ont montré qu'il qu y a un déficit d'apport de 20 à 40 euh, au niveau national. Elle diffère selon, bien sûr, selon les régions. Les régions euh, ouest de l'Algérie sont plus touchées que les régions est. Et actuellement, ce qu'on on remarque, c'est que les pluies euh, se caractérisent par une irrégularité spatiale et temporelle très importante. Donc, elle constitue une menace pour le remplissage des barrages et leur envasement, la recharge des nappes qui devient aléatoire, les sols aussi qui subissent une érosion intensive. Il y a aussi euh, le risque, les risques liés à la, aux événements extrêmes, les, les épisodes de sécheresse et les, épisodes de, et, et les inondations euh, catastrophiques. 
Donc, euh, vu, vu cette situation et, et, et la, la, la conjugaison avec l'évolution des besoins en eau du pays, on, on a amené le secteur qui est chargé des ressources en eau à mettre un ensemble d'actions pour, pour euh, s'adapter à cette situation. C est, c est, c est, parmi ces actions, on peut citer le renforcement des capacités nationales de stockage des ressources superficielles euh, par euh, de la construction de, de, des barrages, le recours aussi à les ressources non conventionnelles qui sont pérennes et qui ne sont pas impactées par les changements climatiques, en particulier le dessalement de l'eau de mer. Il y a d'autres actions qui, qui complètent ces actions, c'est-à-dire l'économie de l'eau, euh, sensibiliser, essayer de, de réduire les pertes, il y a aussi la protection des ressources à travers la, 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 la réalisation des de, de stations d'épuration. Et pour la lutte contre les, les, les inondations, nous avons élaboré une stratégie nationale de lutte contre les inondations. Il y a aussi des projets d'aménagement des ouest et de protection des villes et des agglomérations contre les, les inondations. Donc, euh, c'est une question très importante pour nous. Donc, euh, on essaye de, de faire de mieux pour, pour s'adapter. Et je vous remercie. Hicham, you will translate. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Hossein. Um, so, um, climate change in Algeria is also a problem, like in all, uh, in all Arab countries. Uh, the impacts are visible uh, for, for them at the national level. Um, they evaluated the uh, deficit in terms of uh, um, uh, raining from 20 to 40 percent at the national level. Um, uh, the western region of Algeria is uh, more impacted than the eastern uh, one. Um, rain is becoming more and more irregular with a uh, high threat of uh, um uh, related to infrastructure uh, especially for for dams who are not really um uh, ready to to uh, let's say to uh, to have like regular uh, raining uh, episodes um the recharge of the aquifers is uh, not regular as well and uh, that's not helping them to make uh, good forecasts um they they are witnessing extreme events uh, from uh, like like drought for example um, and uh, uh, the the uh, the need for water is more and more uh, growing in the, uh, in the in the country at the national level um, Algeria is now uh, thinking about uh, actions uh, to uh, to be to to adapt uh, to this new uh, situation uh, to this new situation like for example capacity building uh, uh, like for example uh, improving the capacity uh, of rainwater harvesting um, uh, 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 also uh, uh, work related to non-conventional water uh, like new uh, strategies to um, to go to uh, uh, new sources of water, especially on desalination and uh, investment are made on this way. Um, uh, they are also working on uh, uh, water economy uh, to better use uh, water and to valorize uh, their resources. Um, they are trying to increase awareness uh, on water scarcity and uh, especially for farmers. Um, uh, trying to reduce uh, losses of uh, water as well. Um, on non-conventional water, they are also working on uh, treated wastewater reuse uh, uh, to, to, to secure more water that is not impacted by uh, climate change. Um, uh, they are working on infrastructure as well, uh, on, on dams and, uh, and other water-related infrastructure. So I hope I didn't miss any point, uh, Mr. Hussein. Uh, if there is anything I missed, please let me know. Uh, thank you, thank you. Just la question des inondations. Donc, nous avons une stratégie nationale de lutte contre les inondations. Et merci. Mm. Okay. Um, 
how to. So they are working on uh, uh, providing a new strategy uh, on uh, a flood to, 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 to moderate and to try to how to uh, manage uh, floods because of these extreme events. So this is the, the last point. Thank you, Isha. Welcome. On the spot uh, translation. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll give a chance if anyone would like to um, make yeah. an intervention. Uh -huh. Uh, before, let me just, sorry, I forgot to give the floor to uh, Ms. Nargis uh, Zohrabi to introduce herself, and we'll get back to you. Yeah. Ms. Nargis? Yeah, you are muted. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm uh, Nargis Zohrabi. I'm an associated professor in uh, Islamic Azad University, Ahmad branch in Iran and head of the International Research Program for Irrigation and Drainage, Iran Regional Node, affiliated to ICID. And uh, I'm so happy that you're here. I would like to share you the new initiative started in the ICID about capital development and empowerment of women in different aspects of that related to the water resource management and that related to this uh, cluster activity. And uh, I would like to share uh, a, a little presentation, if it is possible. Uh, I think we can maybe either in the next section or we can schedule it for the next meeting. Uh, let's see how we manage the time today and, and, and we'll let you know. Uh, Ihab, you had your hand up. And welcome yes. again, Ms. Nargis. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thanks yeah, for uh, uh, Hussein. Actually, also, uh, I would like to uh, uh, mention that we did a study uh, on the drought in Algeria, and we found that the northern part of Algeria will be the most impacted uh, by drought. The southern part, I mean, it will be more wet, actually. This is what we projected from RICAR. Uh, data and uh, you know they had the study we did for algeria's basin basin i mean there was a study impact of uh, uh, climate change on sea crop wheat tomato and potato and uh, we found that uh, i remember the wheat projected to reduce by 24 percent almost uh, yield and uh, also the, uh, for wheat and uh, tomato will be less impact Actually, I just arrived yesterday from Algeria. We had a uh, workshop in Qasantina in Algeria. There was on food security. And we submit the project. We accept, I mean, submit the project uh, about uh, how to, uh, uh, water, uh, to apply water management to reduce climate change and drought impact. And we focused in that project uh, on applying hill lakes and uh, groundwater uh, uh, ground, using uh, modeling on uh, for groundwater management to reduce uh, uh, to, to assist the impact of climate change on groundwater. Then uh, propose some solution to reduce the uh, reduction the uh, rapid reduction in groundwater level in most Algeria's, Algeria uh, basin. So maybe I hope, I mean, we'll be able to get the funding for that project and that might help uh, Algeria uh, uh, to face uh, climate change impact and the drought. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ihab. Uh, Dr. Ragab? Well, I, I thought from Ihab's statement that closer to the Atlas Mountain in Algeria, you would have it wetter than the south, unless Dr. Ihab would, uh, would tell me otherwise. No, 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 the, the opposite. Yeah, I, I wonder why, because closer to the Atlas Mountain, usually you have more rain than the rest of the country. Yeah, you are, you are correct. Now, this is, but the impact of climate change will be more on the north part, the impact of climate change. Mm -hmm. So the percentage of reduction of rainfall will be more, uh, and it's actually in the southern part, in, for example, in Timerast, Timerast in the southern part, 
is projected to have increase in rainfall. And in the north, we'll have reduction in rainfall, this impact of climate change. Yeah. And this not only from models. Actually, we did analysis on observed data, and we found uh, the same trend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, if it's impact, that's fine. But it, but the south is it has never been wetter than the north. Not wetter. I'm not. I didn't yeah, say yeah. wetter. It's the impact. The trend is going. Yeah. It's the impact. Yeah, not not the the current situation that the south is wetter than the north. That's not true. But the impact could be the other way around. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, definitely. Yeah, you are correct. Thank you. Uh, I don't see any other hands, so maybe I'll I'll give uh, the floor to Ihab. Uh, you'll moderate the uh, the second uh, uh, part of the session. Thank you, Ziad. And I'm very happy to have country in this group. And uh, we hope the next meeting we'll have uh, more country. Maybe we can see with Hisham. We can we can I mean resend email to all focal point in the country because I guess this is a our target, I mean, to have uh, uh, more interaction with the country. Yes, for uh, uh, the activity on uh, the <clears throat> activity on resilience and the climate change. Uh, maybe if first I will start with Exad, then we can uh, go to other uh, partner attending this meeting. And uh, actually, <clears throat> we uh, currently we have. Uh, joint uh, work with ESCOA and ESCOA uh, on developing hydrogeological map for the Arab region. And also we have uh, assessing of impact of uh, climate change on uh, groundwater. And uh, actually uh, Aksad now developing manual uh, on modeling of impact of, a ground, uh, of climate change on groundwater and uh, using uh, Matterflow or uh, GMS. And uh, maybe by uh, June, this manual will be ready, projected to be, we, I mean, we're planning to have it ready by end of June. Uh, now uh, we, the draft is ready, we, revi we, we worked on it. And uh, as you know, Ziad, we received uh, requests so far, I guess, from uh, three country and we hope to get from fourth country from uh, Sudan, Tunisia, Jordan. And we, I guess we will receive one from Iraq uh, very soon to do the training uh, on uh, assessing the impact of climate change on ground uh, water. And this was based on what we did uh, before on, we did uh, assessing the impact of climate change on deep Dubai basin in Iraq. We start from that, and now we trying to involve more country on on this. Uh, so, so the focus now on on the groundwater, and for the hydrological map, I mean we are working with Esqua to have this platform, and uh, also now we're trying to uh, to contact different uh, focal points from the country. To uh, we send uh, them some form. And uh, we hope also to, uh, I mean, to to, uh, to reach our uh, objective uh, and have really interactive hydrological map for the Arab uh, region. The other activity, uh, maybe my colleague Hiam will talk uh, uh, about our, our other work uh, in this uh, the same uh, subject. Uh, Hiam. Hello, everyone. Uh, actually, we are studying uh, the impact of climate change on the magnitude of uh, drought severity, intensity, uh, duration, and frequency, according to three different climate models, uh, RCB 8.5. Uh, until now, we finished the Mashrik uh, region uh, and uh, start in uh, Algeria, Maghreb, and, uh, and Tunisia. Uh, actually, we used the projected uh, RICAR data. And uh, for Sudan, we used the Mashrik data. And uh, when we uh, compare with observed data, we uh, find that uh, the flood happened in Sudan in 2022 and 2023. We found it's projected by Mashrik uh, uh, 
uh, data. And uh, actually in the covered countries, we uh, should uh, cover all the Arab region. We uh, focus on the main climate zones in the, car in the countries and agricultural areas. Uh, uh, for uh, Mr. Hussein from Algeria, actually we just uh, finished uh, uh, the study for Algeria. Uh, we studied 10 stations in Algeria and found that uh, the north part uh, will be uh, more exposure to, uh, to drought uh, than uh, the south and uh, the drought will be more extensive uh, to the west in uh, Algeria. Um, and uh, that's all <laughs> for drought till now. Yeah, just I will comment. Uh... You know, Hiam was mentioning about Mashriq domain and the Rikar, maybe yeah. some, some people attending not, because the Rikar, Rikar uh, this was the MENA domain, we did the uh, accuracy, it was uh, uh, 50 kilometer, I mean, the geographical accuracy. In Mashriq, we have uh, 10 kilometer, but this uh, is not covering all the Arab region. And really, we found difference between Mashriq and the Mina uh, domain by result in Sudan. I mean, the Mashriq, because it's uh, 10 kilometers, really, we have uh, better result than uh, Rikar. So this, I mean, some activity we're doing at Excel now. Uh, um, so now I wonder if anybody else can present if they have any activity on the climate change and resilience. Tarif, do you want to, or Tarif? Uh, thanks, uh, Ihab. Uh, it's nice to meet with you all uh, uh, and report about some activities with Ziad on ESWA work on climate change. Actually, I will uh, report about one event. I just came back from Kuwait, where we had uh, an Arab conference for uh, cooperation on climate change. And this conference is uh, organized by the Arab Fund for Economic and Social Development. And uh, we had uh, all the Arab funds and financial institutions with the World Bank, with ICARDA, with ESQA, and many other partners. And uh, attending and the countries as well. We had Kuwait, we had Jordan, and all Gulf countries. We were talking about what kind of opportunities for green investment uh, in uh, different sectors, including the water resources. One, and we presented RICAR and uh, the science policy interface, and we uh, discussed in the field of uh, agriculture food security and water, the impact of sea level rise on some countries and how this could relate to uh, loss and damage uh, kind of uh, compensation under the Paris Agreement. Uh, I guess climate financing and especially for the water sector is uh, a key priority now after we did the assessment of climate finance and we found that water and agriculture are receiving only during the last 10 years, 22% of all climate flows in the Arab region. So we highlighted this and we ended up with a presentation by our executive secretary and Carol Shoshani on a proposal, UNESCO proposal presented to the Arab Fund on Arab Climate Change Capacity Building Initiative you know, on how to do the classification for green finance, climate finance, and sustainable development uh, finance, like ODE kind of uh, expenses. So here I want to highlight the importance of the finance for the water sector. We have the AIM proposal with DCF, with ISDB, who were also in the uh, meeting. So there is a big momentum now to move the climate finance in the water resources sector led by ESQA and other financial institutions in the region. I wonder if Ziad wants to add anything to 
Thank you, Tariq. Thank you very much. Uh, Rashid from Igba. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, actually, I would, I would like to uh, just uh, mention one of the projects that uh, we are working on uh, currently at Igba. Uh, in partnership with the Minister of Climate Change and Environment and also uh, with the UAE Space Agency. It's a, a project looking at the potential impact of climate change on uh, crop production under uh, open field and uh, under uh, protected uh, environments. Uh, and in this uh, project, uh, we are using um, projections or climate projections from uh, from uh, NASA. Uh, I think uh, they have uh, downscaled uh, 35, um, 35 models from CIMIP 6. And this is the most updated uh, data that uh, we are using in this project. And uh, for the crop uh, modeling, we are using APSIN. Uh, and the results are, are uh, uh, pretty uh, good, in fact, and uh, then we are looking at major crops that are cultivated under, under open fields. And the objective of this project is to come up with uh, some advices and uh, solutions, in fact, to the open field uh, cropping systems uh, in UAE, uh, knowing that temperature uh, and water also are limiting factors to this kind of cropping systems in, in the country and how the country will uh, solve this, uh, this issue if um, they want to continue producing uh, this food or this, those food items in their open field or shift to uh, protected environment. So this is uh, basically where we are now. And uh, uh, we are hoping to finalize the project results by by end of uh, by beginning or, or middle middle summer to present it in COP twenty eight. Uh, Rashid, I have some questions. Thank you, thank you very much for uh, to mention about the project. But I have a question. You said you used NASA projection thirty five uh, model. So this covered all uh, our region. I mean, and uh, is the uh, global? Yes, it's what's the dim uh, dimension. Resolution, sorry. It's a, it's a global data set at uh, 25 kilometer. Uh, and it is a, a downscaled uh, data from CIMIP 6. Uh, I can share the. Please, yeah, this is what I want to ask you if you can share yeah, the link. I can share the link in the chat and uh, you can look at it. And uh, so, do you have a, a chance to compare this with uh, RECAR or with? Uh, Yes, actually, um, it's aligned with the with the CIMIP six data, the global the global data that is uh, uh, published by uh, the IPCC through the, IP, the, the Atlas, uh, and it is also aligned and to a certain point with the, with RICAR because RICAR is um, is based on CIMIP five. This one is based on CIMIP six, so it's a kind of um, it's a, it's kind of update of the climate scenarios, especially that those ones are um, using the SSPs and uh, your data is um, is based on the RCPs. It's they are aligned. I mean, it's it's same same trend, same same um, uh, same patterns. Maybe slight difference uh, here and there in terms of uh, rainfall. That you know that <clears throat> the rainfall was. Um, updated in CIMIP 6 and the, the trends, even if the trends are the same, the, some patterns are, are still, uh, there, are, there are still some, some differences, but yeah. Okay. There are That's our question, yeah. because you're using EPSIM model for assessing the impact on yield. Yeah. For many crop, can you just, not in detail, I mean, in your mind, do you have the percentage, if you have reduction, how much, uh, for example, for wheat or Yes, you have any we, idea? we found that the drop for maize is uh, is dramatic uh -huh. because uh, maize is uh, yeah C4. very sensitive C4. But we no, we 
we were surprised to see that that the reduction in yield is not really dramatic because uh, it, it is kind of a resilient crop in fact and, and can be can be uh, a, a adapted to this to this region and this is why we studied in fact the, the wheat because um, recently there was a big project here in uh, or big initiative of uh, growing wheat in open field and there was some criticism to how come that in a, in a desert we grow wheat but uh, surprisingly the wheat is is resilient and even under the high emission scenario the drop in yield will not be that much in fact so per 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 hectare we will lose like just one one ton or something similar to one ton per hectare by end of of the century so yeah it is something that uh, that is uh, that can be a solution to the to the future so uh, especially for the food security uh, so yeah so the results will be presented in cop 28 and i think it's um, we we do have um, some uh, good results to to show and okay and, and in fact the the idea is just to see what are the cropping systems that can be resilient and can be can uh, be sustainable in the future and the ones that we need to 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 find a way to uh, or to, to to adapt them to the context of of this region thank you thank you very much we're looking for a couple 28 to see the whole <laughs> result very interesting yeah. sure. rashid sure nisreen uh, Nisreen. Thank you, Hi, Dr. Nisreen. Ihab. Hi, we nice miss to you. meet you. We miss you in Algeria, Nisreen. <laughs> <You>. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't all come. <laughs> okay, well. uh, Anyway, for AOG, uh, first of all, um, we have finalized um, a diploma on carbon neutrality and uh, carbon footprint for different sectors with the Egyptian National Institute for Standards, an NGO and reputable experts. Uh, AOD intends to organize a regional capacity building activity on carbon neutrality and carbon footprint for the agricultural sector. Um, and this will be soon organized with the League of Arab States. Um, we have uh, discussions, ongoing discussions uh, with the FAO colleagues also on collaboration on a series of webinars to enhance knowledge and capacities um, on good practices for making the agricultural sector more resilient in the region and also working on a study on assessing and monitoring climate impacts on agri-food systems. Um, also, a contribution and session just of an ongoing discussion on in, at the MENA Climate Week. Um, we are also discussing with some partners and at an intervention at COP28 on regenerative farming as an integrated approach to mitigate climate change impacts and enhance um, adaptation and resilience to climate change. Um, actually, this builds on the uh, findings of COP27, the ministerial session we organized. Um, and the need to uh, position the agricultural sector as a contributor to climate change impacts and the need to work on mitigation um, along with adaptation to climate change in the agricultural sector. So we adopt the regenerative uh, farming approach and we also we are developing a concept note um, and inviting uh, partners to collaborate with us, how we can inform farmers on this approach, how they can have, um, uh, how we can, um, in, in addition to producing more food, restore and enhance the health of ecosystems um, through, ma through many uh, um, areas, as you know, uh, through uh, carbon sequestration, water management, uh, promoting biodiversity, um, integration of livestock and um, maintaining soil health. So this is the approach that AOD adopts and uh, is mainstreaming for in the Arab region. Um, we are working on a, a concept note for uh, demonstrating this approach uh, at field level to demonstration sites that can manifest the this approach practically to farmers and capacitate their um, 
their skills to do these uh, uh, these um, practices uh, with a feasibility also um, uh, with having the feasibility for the practices as well on economic side. Um, um, also, we are working with the International Water Management Institute, EMI, on a project for improving productivity of saline landscapes in Egypt. One component of this project is the projection of future salinity uh, in Egypt uh, in relation to climate change scenarios on national level, how we can predict the salinity and regard the uh, temperatures and the uh, several criteria in order to prepare for a tool to uh, define the priority areas for intervention. And at field level also, what, um, what uh, practices do the farmers, what indigenous, uh, info, what indigenous, indigenous uh, knowledge um, is there at, at farm level and how we can promote these practices along with the success stories and international experiences on working on saline water and um, soil uh, landscapes. Um, this is in short, and um, you are all welcome to join AOD in these um, uh, activities, and they, which are just in, in, in the phase of discussion. Some of them are just in, in the project. Thank you, Dr. Jeanette. Thank you, Ansreen. Thank you. Uh, Tariq Hassan from UNICEF. Yes, good morning again. Uh, so for UNICEF, a quick update. Uh, so we had a... Uh, um, an expert meeting, let, let's say 10 days ago, which lasted over two days, about the, having policy recommendations um, provided to us from UN organizations, the Arab League and NGOs, on the topic of uh, impacts of climate change on children. Uh, this week, we had a, a learning technical event in, uh, in Dubai with, uh, with delegates from countries uh, such as there was Morocco, um, uh, and, and others, so I have a list here, um, Iraq, Tunisia, Jordan, and, um, and from other Gulf countries um, on, on youth engagement on the topic of climate change. Uh, we have also started what we call a wash reg in Iraq that's about supporting regulators in terms of safe drinking water supply, which is UNICEF's mandate. And we will be engaged at the World Water Week on the topic of, of water governance, more specifically uh, strengthening the enabling environment. Which brings me to my last point. It's a request from on UNICEF's part. If you can actually invite CWI to the to these um, um, uh, meetings on water governance because we work closely with them on this topic. Thank you. Thank you, Tarek. Thank you. I guess we have Dr. Raja still there. Dr. Raja. Dr. Raja. Yeah, I'm still there. Uh, I guess you raised your hand. Uh, yeah, I raised my hand uh, uh, earlier because I was okay. wondering, oh, was uh, uh, Dr. Rashid talking about the climate change models on crops and so on. Uh, my question was that whether those models, they consider only temperature or the CO2 increase as well, because two, the two actually- Good question, yeah. Yeah, so that the two, they have uh, a different impacts and also, uh, we, from my experience with salt mid model, uh, respiration losses could actually uh, uh, balance the, any increase in the biomass through the photosynthesis, which is increased by the CO2 concentration. So we, we, we try to find what the net biomass increase or decrease given temperature and CO2 uh, impact. That was my question to Dr. Rashid. Uh, actually, uh, now we uh, in APSIM, um, we did not uh, vary, in fact, the CO2, um, even if the idea was, yes, to take it into account. We, so we, what we have uh, uh, used for to drive the model is um, just the temperature and solar, solar radiation and the precipitation. But uh, definitely the CO2, we know that uh, it has an impact to, to to counterbalance, in fact, uh, increase of, uh, of temperature, it can it can have a positive impact on, on the yield. And this is why we are now thinking of um, uh, re-evaluating, in fact, the, this impact of climate change, but not by using a multi-model uh, ensemble, in fact, predictions, including other models that can take into account the, the CO2 um, emissions as well. 
or maybe salt med, maybe aqua crop or other other models that can uh, help us in this ex exercise will be will be used. Yeah, Rashid, actually, I want to uh, comment, similar comment to what uh, the same question of Dr. Raja, because we know at Axad we did actually. Let me tell you, we we did not use everything before, but we use the crop cyst and aqua crop. Mm -hmm. uh, both models they consider the. CO2, you can CO2. include CO2 impact. And actually, we found a little bit different between aqua crop and uh, crop cyst. And uh, we are ready to cooperate if you'd like. I mean, we can, I, I am really very interested in uh, what you're doing. We can share, I mean, our experience in crop uh, cyst and in aqua crop. Sure. So, anytime, maybe you can uh, work through email. Yeah. Uh, see, because uh, uh, what Dr. Raja mentioned, really, CO2. Yes. has very, very impact, positive impact. I mean, it's, it's overcome the negative, some, most of the time, the negative impact of uh, reduction of rainfall and increase of temperature. So maybe we can share our experience. And I guess this yeah. one of the objectives of this cluster. I mean, I'm very, very happy today. I mean, what we're hearing from different uh, uh, partners. Yeah, but Dr. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Rehab, there is a, a, a third factor is the, the, the increase in temperature would increase respiration losses of the biomass. Mm -hmm. And there was a Swedish uh, um, research. Uh, actually, they found the net increase in the biomass is zero uh, because of respiration losses that actually uh, balanced any increase in the biomass due to the CO2 increase. So you have to have a model that uh, not only to include the temperature and CO2 impact, but also respiration losses. And I can tell you, salt med does that. It has got the three elements, respiration losses, the CO2, and temperature. And it, it is worthwhile to include that in, uh, in addition to um, aqua crop and crop cess as well. You can compare these models uh, for the performance uh, under climate change. Yes, I don't know if uh, my hair, are you still with us, my hair? Maher Selma. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm with Maher, you. Uh, I'm very pleased you are with us because there was always a question about aqua crop, about uh, how aqua crop takes the CO2 uh, impact. And I remember when we met in Tunisia with the uh, core group, we discussed that. My, I mean, from my long experience using aqua crop, I always had concern about. Uh, I mean, if there is exaggeration if taking uh, uh, the impact of CO2. And Dr. Rajab always, when I did my presentation, he comments the same thing. I would like if we can have joint meeting, I mean, with me, Dr. Rajab, and uh, our colleague who working on uh, aqua crop, if we can meet, discuss this CO2, maybe if we if there is need to adjust this in the model. I don't know, Maher, if you can lead this or... I mean, Indeed, aqua crop has that, that that embedded, as you know, and it had been discussed before. Uh, never highlighted as a main target by by aqua crop uh, to look into that, but we raised that issue recently with uh, with a, a group of of developers. We call them just to 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 to, to tell you briefly on that uh, that we we have. Uh, what we call it a core group of developers of aqua crop that yes. re that meets regularly and yes. tackle any issue in relation to the model itself update uh, um, provide uh, uh, technical support of course uh, lead organization of of trainings etc or application etc so if and that this group can also meet uh, um, on demand if and if the topic is in, interesting and this 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 is connected with this cluster or beyond between ICID and AXAD uh, 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 or others I mean certainly we can we can have this meeting I can call um, the the core group of of developers this is only the developers, not expert group, just, just to highlight that because many would ask how oh, I were not member of expert group, it's the developers. So, uh, and I can, I can, we can organize this and see what is, what is to be presented, what is the concern by colleagues and whether 
that can be taken on the agenda of this uh, group of developers uh, in in our next month's plan or so. Yeah, that's yeah, very fine if 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 there is an interest either within this cluster uh, uh, activities uh, as a side event, Mohammed colleagues or separate. I don't I don't mind. Both ways are fine. Yeah. Yeah, we can have separate for Aqua Crab. I mean, with Elias and other colleague. Uh, and Dr. Rajab, I would like Dr. Rajab to be with us if he had time. I mean, because really I have big concern and I discussed this before with Elias many times. And I mean, it's not a single person. I emphasize Aquacrop is institutionalized. So yeah, it's exactly. the developers. Okay. There are six, seven institutes contributed to the development of this. So that's okay. what we are attempt, uh, doing since a couple of years. Yeah. These are yeah. the institutes. Any decision on Aquacrop should be done by these institutes okay, plus FAO, you. so not thank a single hear, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, because I compare this with the crop cyst, I found big difference really with the uh, result. I mean, in fact, uh, for, for the same side. So maybe we can discuss this. So if you can arrange it, just let us know. I mean, we can agree on time and we can have this meeting. And if the courage of you agree to be, with yeah. this will be. Just send the details, what is the topic exactly, exactly, what we would like to have, whether you would like to highlight it from another models, sure. what is your, your, what is the concern, and then we have exactly. a discussion meeting with the, with, with the core group virtually, we organize it for an hour, okay. so that's fine. Thank yeah. you, my head. So, thank you very and much. And that's ICID, AXAD, or others. Thank you, thank you, my head. Okay. Uh, yeah. You finished, done, Dr. Rajab, or? Uh, yeah, there was one only issue related to the groundwater map uh, okay. that you are producing in Excel. Yes, uh, and, and, you, and, and you referred to the mod flow as uh, as a model to use. Uh, no, no, there's two, sorry, there's two different things I mentioned. Yeah. I mentioned two activity. The hydrological map, the separate activity. Yeah. The other activity, we doing assessment yeah. of impact of climate change on groundwater. These two separate activity. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. That's uh, my, my comment was related to climate change on the in the groundwater. Okay, it, it is very important because our groundwater in the Arab region is non-renewable most of the time, and there is hardly map. Uh, especially there, you have shared aquifers uh, exactly. like the the the, uh, the Nubian sandy stone under Libya, Chad, and Egypt, and so on. So you have those shared aquifers and hardly uh, renewable. And it, it is very tricky and very difficult to estimate the recharge going into these aquifers. Yes. I face that myself. I'm yes. talking from my own experience. It is very difficult to really, uh, to find a, a number as how much actually is the recharge rate to these aquifers. Uh, so we, we uh, I would appreciate very much really um, knowing more about really your work on, on that area, because it is important for the the the, uh, the MENA region and uh, the Middle East in, in particular. Uh, but it's a very good idea to to start thinking about the groundwater because very little work done in this area. Thank you. Thank you. I guess this uh, was the target of let's say second second phase of Ricard Ziad as a. Because in the first phase, we focused more on surface uh, water. Yeah. Now in this second phase, we do more focus on the groundwater. Yeah. And we hope, I mean, uh, to see, to find something, I mean, uh, interesting to our, our uh, Arab country. Thank you, Dr. Rajab. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I pronounced correct, our colleague from Ikarda, Ago, Ago, Ago. It's Hi, um, Ajit. I think, uh, thank you, Dr. Ihab. Um, there was somebody before me, Rafiq. Um, do you, uh, does Rafiq wants to go ahead or? Go ahead, go ahead. Go okay. ahead, please. Hi, everyone. Um, Ajit from Ikada. Uh, yeah, we did uh, like, uh, a lot of work on long term modeling of the impact of climate change on crop production under different systems uh, in close collaboration with uh, UN Esqua. And in that uh, activity, we used the long-term RICAR data sets and uh, found out that 
in uh, irrigated systems, uh, um, the wheat yields were declining. And that is uh, um, not only because of enhanced temperature, but also uh, because of, of course, we considered CO2 fertilization through APSIM. Um, but I, the one important thing that I want to uh, uh, invoke here is the, the physiological effect of climate change, not only through uh, the temperature stress, but you know uh, there are uh, triggers that uh, have, plants have for seed setting and flowering. And this is very important because uh, especially under climate change, what we sometimes uh, um, with high temperature and uh, adequate water, biomass might increase because of enhanced photosynthesis, but there could be physiological differences that are complicated because like flower setting. And this is especially true in, in um, crops like wheat. So even if there is enhanced biomass, seed setting may, or flowering may not happen. And because of that, yield can decline dramatically. So this we have found in some crops, but there is the effect, the, the photo, photo, photo effect is the, there are wheat varieties that are uh, tolerant to that. And uh, well, well, it's called, exactly called as, uh, um, what is it, the cooling, chilling requirement. And uh, that compo the varieties are there with, with, which does not have that. So it is a question of variety also. So the, the, which variety you use uh, for long-term simulation? So, um, of course, there is the effect of temperature in the form of temperature stress that uh, declines photosynthesis. Then there is the water stress. Then there is the CO2 fertilization. Then there are other physiological mechanisms. Uh, of course, the uh, respiration, autotrophic respiration, uh, enhancement of autotrophic respiration is also there. And moreover, the, the fractionation of carbon assimilation between from photosynthesis, how the carbon is fractionated into biomass or uh, uh, roots, or uh, that is also complicated under climate change. So, so all these things we might have to consider. It is considered explicitly in geophysical models like uh, uh, land surface models, et cetera, but it is still not uh, very uh, detailed in crop simulation models. Maybe we have to think about that in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for this clarification. Uh, Rafiq, Mr. Rafiq, Mr. Rafiq from Tunisia, I guess. Thank you. Thank you very much, you. Chair. Uh, I apologize uh, for taking the floor uh, twice. No, no, you're I'm, welcome. You're welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So I have two, two things to, to highlight. I, I agree with Dr. Ragab about to to store uh, water in aquifers and uh, i think that uh, with ipcc report the, the last one <coughs> the uh, evapotranspiration increased and uh, in our regi region especially uh, in in tunisia in kerwan for example uh, 15 percent increasing of uh, evapotranspiration. So water must be stored in aquifers, not behind dams. As uh, I don't know if uh, Dr. Agab, you, you are agree with me. Right? Yeah. So now, uh, colleagues, uh, there is a lot of work done or currently uh, in process with all uh, your institutions. But I think uh, we're still in siloing process. Uh, and uh, an overlapping process. Also. So uh, please, we need to avoid th these two things. It's urgent now to combine all our efforts with better coordination between all the technical and research institutions. Uh, in order to ensure the best results. I, I, I heard many, many, many things from, from you, you, your side. Uh, NASA and I don't know, you know, with the global things now, it's, it's not possible 
to to have uh, a projects for our farmers action on the ground we need downscaling things uh, i don't know i don't know we need we need to 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 discuss about the future of uh, of uh, the work of your institutions with uh, with our government thank you very much thank you thank you very much yes we agree with you definitely i mean we have to have an action i mean in order to avoid the negative impact of uh, yeah. climate change on our water uh, resource <clears throat> in many countries now we accept at exit we receive requests from many countries to uh, develop study on the artificial recharge to uh, groundwater there is no uh, more uh, country requesting uh, that nowadays thank you uh, Dr. Please. Ihab, if you allow me, as time is okay. running and we need to give some time yeah, yeah, to we'll our colleague Maher, uh, we just have uh, our colleague Teresa to update on FAO activities uh, in the regional office here, and uh, our colleague from IOM, Stanley, who also wants to uh, maybe uh, give us a brief in five minutes each so that we finish with uh, the tour de table. Thank you. Thank you. So now I turn over to uh, FAO to present the drought. Uh, Drought patron. Yes, Teresa over here. Uh, no, let's let's, let's give some time to Teresa. Yes, Teresa. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I think I'm also very happy to hear about the drought platform, and I'm sorry to join you all late. Um, uh, I, I don't think there's uh, so so much to update, and I think we all meet on a regular basis. But I would be very keen. I'm just following the discussion in the last uh, 20 minutes or half an hour uh, to hear. Uh, you know. Following on what uh, Dr. Raf uh, Rafik was saying, what are some of the key priorities that our agency should be working on? You mentioned downscaling, um, and then there's also this uh, a lot of work on water. Um, so, I mean, I, I think we, for example, we're going to be working with AOAD, and I see Ms. Reen here, uh, to try to capacitate, I think, the, the right actors to, to scale up their actions on climate. Um, you, you know that we, in, in terms of the policy side, we also facing a lack of uh, capacities uh, with, you know, agriculture, maybe less so water sector uh, people to to uh, to prioritize, to rank, and to uh, to identify uh, and, and implement climate resilient actions. Uh, so I think I maybe for the interest of today, I would be interested in translating um, this science or, or this all these findings and research into what you know you would like to see an agency like FAO do uh, in terms of our you know our good uh, connections with, uh, with ministries of agriculture and our connections with the climate change units of these uh, agencies of, of these uh, of ministries um, and of course Dr. Rafik also your perspective from the uh, negotiator side you know what is actually missing in this capacity building what is missing in this connection to uh, the, the policy interface um, and to 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 uh, uh, joining it up also with the, the national processes of climate change planning. Um, I, I I think um, you know we we continue in FAO to have um, greater and greater interest in climate smart agriculture and climate resilient agriculture. We know that that links up a lot to the IPCC uh, AR6 language of climate resilient development uh, and their interest in, for example, agricultural drought. Is relevant here, maybe to Maher's uh, presentation as well. So I, I think we, um, we 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 as we program all these projects, we see you know as usual the the, uh, the need for for greater capacities, um, the need for 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 greater yeah even on just the the, the topics that keep changing. Um, last year we had a, a pre COP twenty seven workshop on agriculture and climate. Uh, and we discovered actually a, a great appetite for understanding net zero approaches. Um, we have a lot of demands to 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 uh, uh, on the measurement and and how to start work on loss and damage. So I think um, here we are to take stock and with AOAD we hope to to launch a few capacity development activities and we're hoping to plan um, some maybe events to, to, uh, in at the MENA Climate Week. Uh, and for COP28, um, there's definitely envisaged another food and agriculture pavilion. It's another fora to, to showcase some of maybe the, the, the region's work and collaboration. Uh, I think now I'm going to stop there because I, I also didn't come for the first hour, so I, I don't want to repeat uh, things, but thank you and I'm happy to take questions. Uh, Dr. Ihab, 
yes, maybe yes. we can move to uh, uh, to the presentation as we want yeah. to benefit from, uh, yeah, please, from the presence uh, of Maher? our colleague Meher. Yes. Yeah. Hi, Meher. Thanks very much, colleagues. Uh, yes, it's very much uh, interesting to 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 be with you from Rome. While my colleague Eva is sharing uh, the presentation, maybe Eva, you, you start sharing. Uh, I can, I can just say that we sit in Rome, as you know, in the HQs, uh, uh, and and we're so happy to be called as well to 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 regional initiatives and connect with regions, because the the way that it operates, that the normative work developed at HQs should be connected with the field, then the feedback from the field should reflect into the normative work and both 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 sides of the equations if they are working if they are working correctly then we we get ultimate result so in 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 uh, in 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 rome uh, in the land water division we are responsible for the uh, the drought globally uh, within the community of practices of uh, of drought if i went off uh, the presentation is not in uh, within this community of practice, we work together with the uh, uh, with the UNCCD, the UN Convention to Combat Desertification, with the IDMP, the Integrated Drought Management Program, hosted by WMO with GWP and many other partners. Uh, so, uh, from that point, we have taken an initiative the last two years to develop what is called. FAO drought portal and, and and I'm happy to present it together with my colleague Eva. So I will I will start with the first part and she will continue the second one next Eva. So the story with the portal simply that that uh, um, we 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 thought about a more global knowledge sharing platform to support countries. Uh, uh, looking at, at, at integrated drought management for the purpose, of course, as the theme of the cluster to enhance resilience of agriculture and, and, and food security. And that came out of the result of the last two uh, years. Next, please. So the, the idea that from FAO's point of view, it does not exist uh, uh, or it had not been uh, uh, before to have a, a more comprehensive uh, portal to, 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 to illustrate the work uh, on, on drought. So that's what we developed. Uh, of course, there are, there are works everywhere, but such a, such a global was not. So that's where we, 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 we did it. Uh, and we, we, we thought to do it in four parts that will follow the, the structure of the website itself, the portal from looking at resilience to uh, responding to emergency, to sharing knowledge, and very, very important part in it, we're still working on it, that is the tracking of finance of DRAT, that I will uh, talk shortly about it. So here, what you see on the web, actually, this portal is supported by a Jeff uh, work we do globally as well, as I mentioned early when we started the, 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 the session then uh, that is developed together with the UNCCD and other partners within the, the GEF program we have. So from what I presented as four blocks of the portal, let me look at the, resilient, uh, the resilience part. So the resilience part actually is organized in, uh, 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 um, in relation or strong relation and clustered uh, within the three integrated drought management pillars, um, you may be familiar with them. It has been agreed since 2013 to have a three pillars that they represent in the great, uh, integrated drought management. These are early warning and um, these are vulnerability assessment and last is uh, impact and response. So everything always uh, structured around them to provide solutions and lessons learned, this is important, to show from FAO's point of view uh, uh, tools and methodologies within this cluster and to look at the global knowledge resources as well. Next, please. So this, the three I mentioned, you can navigate later and see, and maybe also after with the, with the demo, you will see more. So the first one, which is, 
uh, uh, the, 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 the demonstration or the showing of, of, of FAO, FAO projects. Very interesting, this point, and I would like to highlight it to colleagues, what it is. Because usually as FAO people, we have a huge program of projects. We, 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 we store these projects under what is called internal system FMIS, as we all know it. I don't even recall what is the abbreviation meaning, but I learned since 23 years, FMIS. So FAO staff people access uh, uh, this system to get all related to projects. So what we have done within this, and we update, of course, we made it somehow open to public that, that the public can see beyond FAO what is the route related projects of FAO since 2000. So, and that is through a very, um, very, very, let's say, organized uh, search uh, uh, method to do it. And uh, through this, one would see everything done by FAO since 2000 on drought. The other part is looking at toolkits, instruments, softwares, approaches, relevant, as I mentioned, and highlight always to the IDM, um, the great drought management pillars, and accessible through the portal, but also it reports regularly uh, the success stories from FAO field operation linked uh, 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 link to relevant FAO's pages. Next, please. So let me move to the second, the second part or cluster in this, which is to do with emergency, as I mentioned. So FAO, we know that it supports drought from countries through rapid response and mitigation plans to save livelihoods of uh, and drought risk. But we tried to document that in an interactive, uh, 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 comprehensive rather interactive uh, 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 portal. Next, please. So in there, we are showcasing or uh, two things. One is the crisis driven responses that FAO provides. And the second one is the post-disaster toolkits that also FAO provides uh, with regards to drought. Next, please. So again, from field experience where usually the public beyond FAO, they do not see FAO's project comprehensively from emergency point of view. So here we have this tool to provide the public again, accessing the drought emergency uh, program of FAO and lessons learned, but also the, um, uh, the emergency interventions uh, done by FAO uh, by country, and this is this is can be this can be also accessed directly on this portal. Next, please. So uh, the last one I would uh, present in part, and I I, I give uh, the third one I would say, and then I give further to my colleague Eva is on the policy to action, what we call it, and the learning part. This is also substantial. And we presented uh, comprehensively in the porter. Next, please. So in this one, so the portal is really facilitating the learning by including in it innovative learning materials related to all aspects of drought management. Next, please. So as you see here, the, the, the portal has three parts. It has the e-learning um, uh, uh, cluster of it where you have courses on drought in particular. Here we're focusing on drought, as I mentioned. And these courses um, can be followed directly from there. And this includes uh, uh, really uh, uh, an interactive and dynamic uh, way of doing it. It also has, has part to, 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 to post all events of FAO to the maximum, but here is the feedback from the field. Whenever needed, we can always post in uh, the global events, regional country events and gatherings uh, that described and made accessible via this streaming and also the publications related to, to drought. Next, please. 
And then I stop here and I give more uh, the, the, to my colleague Eva to look at the, the last two parts, interesting parts. This is uh, when it comes to the result framework for monitoring the implementation of route policies. This is a very big line we work on together with partners and the drought portal as well with some demos to you, Eva. Yes, thank you very much, Maher. Well, actually, we we included the policy to action into the uh, sharing knowledge, let's say, part of the portal, because it's still under consultative process. Uh, the idea to have this tab on the drought portal is stemming from the key message of the co 15 to UNCCD. Uh, the key message was basically to translate the policies and, and plans to the, into tangible actions on the field. Uh, so the idea was to create a resource framework for technical people in order to measure the progress on the implementation of drought policies and plans. Uh, we involved already 32 countries into this process to, let's say, to talk about the proposed approach and also to validate this resource framework. But we are happy to involve more so if any of you is really interested to uh, be, be part of these consultations, we are, uh, we are happy to include more. So the idea of this resource framework is to support really the, the, the monitoring and uh, measurement of the progress uh, on the implementation. We are via three, let's say, systems, interrelated systems, natural resource and ecosystem, food production system, and economy and livelihood. What we did, uh, we made a global stock taking or review of global stock taking to see what are the most likely drought measures, uh, what have been already implemented, uh, and we made sensible groups uh, for catch-all indicators. And these indicators basically cover the uh, all possible, let's say, drought measurement um, or, or, or drought mitigation measures. And of course, uh, these indicators are also in line with the IMDP pillars. So we can really identify which measures or which indicator are related to the three specific uh, pillars. And finally, as Maher mentioned, uh, the very important part and very critical part is the drought tracker. And we are just working on updating given the title to drought finance tracker. Uh, the drought finance tracker is the first global information or statistical system uh, to gather information about the deployed investment specifically in drought. We are using OSCD data sets based on uh, cooperation with the OSCD. So we basically uh, filtered those uh, official development assistance projects programs, which were targeted towards drought. This is right now, before I would show the, the short demonstration, this is in um, test environment right now. We are planning to publish it around July, but, uh, but we are very happy to show how it's going to look like. So as I mentioned, the drought tracker, the idea is to give a statistical system uh, which can support the analysis of resource mobilization and allocation. Very importantly, at a global level, including all countries. So this is the portal itself. Uh, very quickly going through, it has uh, five tabs, the home page, the statistics, the overview, the explore more, and the analysis. Um, the first home page, is basically the overview of the timeline of uh, investment deployment over 20 years. Uh, if you go to the statistic part, the statistic part is uh, a numerical, let's say, uh, data set for all projects, drought related projects in the, the last 20 years. If you can see the high level filters, uh, you can search for the parameters as per regions, country, year, objective, gender objective, sector, and financial instrument. So just a bit of interesting thing. Uh, we just made a filtering for Near East and North Africa, and we will see how the situation looks like in the, uh, in the countries in the region. So the first uh, overview tab is around the key statistics, but in a visualized manner. Uh, we basically we made an exercise to distill or precipitate those uh, 
statistics which are the most important in terms of uh, tracking drought finance. So you can see that we have the uh, visualization on the distribution flow, uh, finance flow. Uh, we have also about the distribution of the uh, projects among sectors, the distribution of finance flows uh, among sectors. And I just stopped here for a second because this is very interesting in the context of the Nena region. Uh, I must say, in global context, uh, the vast majority of the projects are related to agriculture, emergency, and food assistance. But very interestingly, if we go back for a second, um, the finance allocation, the annual distribution of the finance flows, and also the distribution of the number of projects. Uh, water supply and sanitation sector are dominant in the Nana region. And this is a very good reality check that what you have been discussing in the past uh, one hour, uh, water supply and sanitation, water sector itself is uh, critically important because everything depends on a bad performing water sector in the region. And uh, the last charts are about uh, the gender objectives in terms of uh, budget distribution and uh, project distribution. Um, I must say at global level, um, the picture is, let's say, not really bright. So the gender objective is vastly overlooked in all countries, um, meaning that uh, gender is not really mainstreamed into the uh, project documents and the objectives of the project. So if we go to the next uh, tab, which is the explore more, uh, it's an, a, basically a complementary uh, tab to have more nuanced analysis of the, uh, of the finance flows. If again, we restrict the analysis for the NANA region, uh, you can see here, these are the countries. And again, a good reality check because we see that Sudan received the most or the uh, largest proportion of the deployed investment. And in fact, uh, Horn of Africa and Sudan is uh, hit by drought uh, way more than other countries because of the, um, practically the, the, the amount of dry land in the other countries are more, uh, let's say, restrict the ability to, um, to, to, to call for drought related projects. So the nature of the projects are slightly different, but we all know that uh, the emergency assistance for uh, drought relief in Sudan is really high. So if we go further, we have again a share of total budget among sectors. We can see the uh, gender objectives per main recipient sectors. And finally, we have a distribution of the project, uh, let's say the budgets. And I must say that these budgets are quite small, meaning that uh, we have more smaller uh, projects. Uh, and these are basically, these refer to the scattered or let's say uh, international donor-based finance of the uh, drought-related projects. And finally, the very last uh, tab is about analysis. This analysis is not interactive anymore. So users have ready to use uh, and interpreted in, uh, information here. The idea of the analysis tab is to highlight those key messages, uh, what we have, uh, what should reach basically the decision makers. So we have to see the sector allocation, why the sector allocation happens in this way. Uh, so this tab is, um, is prepared based on our white paper, which we are planning to uh, published around July, August, and this white paper is about uh, a review of drought finance at global level. So this tab uh, highlights those messages, but what are the most important to understand and what are the most important to tackle or address uh, at political level right now. So this is the, the tool itself. Uh, it's already fully functional in the, in the beta version and you will be able to access it very soon. 
And we included a very short uh, video about the portal, but I think it makes more sense if I just uh, send you the link to the portal uh, so you can uh, open it and explore it yourself. You can keep then... it if you want to show it a few minutes, if okay. We're, we're okay, so I think that's fine. Just a couple of minutes because it's a few minutes only. Yeah, just to just to walk through basically the the website. Uh, this is the first page by, with the objectives, with the success stories. We also highlight the events, so we are very happy to uh, upload all the events. Uh, and you can see that also the today event is uploaded already uh, to the web page. Uh, in the collaboration section, we have the drought toolbox, the linkable drought toolbox. We work together with UNCCD. Uh, and it's very important to use the two portal and the toolbox box together. Uh, the portal is built on FAO experiences, so it's more uh, in line with the mandate of FAO, uh, by the toolbox is a global toolbox. Um, we see the three pillars of the integrated drought management, and in each uh, pillar we have the uh, project database, we have the FAO toolkits, so you can see, for example, in the monitoring and the early warning, all FAO developed toolkits are included, like the ACES, you might know it, the Apostat, the Jews, and we have also the access to vapor uh, application. You can just practically uh, click on anything and uh, and it will direct you to the to the tool. We have uh, the filtering um, function to find projects related to, to drought, FAO projects. Um, and you can see here, this is an ID card basically of the eight projects. So we have the activities, we have the budget. So the let's say the key parameters of the budgets or the, or, or the projects, what uh, can inform you about the existing projects. The emergency, as I have mentioned, uh, Emergency operations are in a restricted number of countries, uh, of course. So, but all operations, what FAO conduct or FAO uh, have made or are engaged uh, are linkable through this website. We have the drought tracker, but we already discussed. Uh, I could just quickly go through. And this is the policy action, which I mentioned in the beginning. Uh, the results framework, let's say the first version of the results framework is already uploaded. Uh, but after the validation, we are going to revise it and, uh, and publish the final uh, results framework, including also the publication and the methodology paper behind and uh, the framework itself. Uh, the learning section can guide you to um, all kind of, let's say, learning products related to drought, including e-learning products like this one. So this is easy to access, basically. Everything is gathered in, gathered in uh, one single place. Um, we structure it in a way that you can really follow up and re really access everything what is related to drought at FAO. So I would really encourage you to, to explore the site, to see the, the training products, to see the events and, and follow the events because everything is duly um, updated and uploaded uh, before the events. And wherever we have the possibility, we have uh, web streaming and online streaming so you can follow the events. And as Maher mentioned uh, in the beginning of the webinar. We had a high-level event at the UN Water Conference in New York, and uh, we already uploaded the, uh, let's say, the synthesis of this event. So if you are interested about either the event, uh, the link can guide you to the, or direct you to the event, or you can read the synthesis of the outcomes of the webinar. And thank you very much. Thanks very much. I have the last words, as you see, Apart from the knowledge hub, you see the the embedded uh, the embedded analysis and tools even been developing, not over. It's not posting. It's developing. The tracker is a very very important exercise for us because I must say, um, we're not the only the, amongst the the drought uh, community of practice. We call them. We're not the only organization work on the topic. So, but 
it has been agreed amongst the community that FAO leads two thematic areas. One is financing of drought together with the World Bank, co-lead, I must say, and one is from policy to action and this is with the UNCCD. That's why you see the two tabs on this platform uh, uh, related to these two topics, because we believe that we are in, in, in the best position to do that. With this, uh, thanks so much and ready to receive, I think the link being posted by other colleague uh, to that, but uh, ready to, to, to receive any question or, or comments. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Reja. Yeah, thank you, uh, Maher and Eva. This is very nice, really, uh, work, and it is really needed. Um, the only thing that I, uh, from my experience, uh, is that whether the people, they know the difference between drought and water shortage and water scarcity, because the drought is uh, more a climate change phenomena. Uh, and the people they should know that before using the portal. This is related to the drought that's caused by climate change. Uh, whether that's really clear in the beginning of the portal to, to as a warning that it shouldn't be used for conditions of water shortage. This is for a, a, a drought caused by climate change. Uh, I think Eva uh, touched on drought indicators. And I wonder whether those drought indicators are hydrological drought indicators like the river flows, like the rainfall, like the evapotranspiration uh, or evaporation. My experience with the drought project in the UK, when we use uh, the gross rainfall, not the net rainfall, and when we use the actual evaporation, not the potential evapotranspiration, we get different severity level of the drought. And the indicators we get from using potential and the gross rainfall uh, in terms of values, they are actually different from when we use the actual and net rainfall as indicator for droughts. And we documented that for the British government uh, when we talked about the drought, because we still get droughts in Europe. And uh, it's not only really uh, the Middle East or MENA region. And, and currently, of course, Spain is struggling um, uh, with the drought. So we, we, we need to, 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 to look at the hydrologic indicators uh, more in depth, and we take into account that the actual evaporation and net rainfall can give you different drought uh, uh, indicators uh, values. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Rajab. Indeed, I mean, the definition and the differentiation is a matter. And then if you dig in, you will find uh, this in the introductions. And also, by the way, with the UNCCD, as I mentioned, we cannot at FAO claim, claim drought, but we really, really work with UNCCD closely and other partners. So you will see publications we have prepared with the UNCCD and IDMP explaining all these matters related to drought. So, so we really, uh, we, we, we really take, take note of that, but it's with, 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 with uh, seeing the website in depth, you will find that also you will have, you will have by pillars background papers that, that, that what we call them pillars review papers. So that will also enlighten all, all, all issues related to definition and practices. Uh, on the indicators, it's a really wide one when you dig in because what uh, what we attempted is to look into the all 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 scope of, of indicators, but I leave it to Eva to answer that one, not yeah. to hijack it. Yeah. Yes, uh, that's a bit of um, confusion, and I think we have to further uh, work on this terminology because. We could not differentiate the, the name well, because drought indicators, when we talk about drought indicators, it's about the indicators, how they monitor and uh, predict drought, like the uh, standardized precipitation index, the uh, stream discharge, and so on and so on. And WMO made a uh, very good stock taking of existing indicators. So all monitoring, so really all drought indicators are included in this in this publication. What we did in the results framework, it's more about uh, for programming and policy implementation. So it's uh, it's to use these indicators for measuring, let's say, the 
the progress on the implementation of the projects. So we didn't go into the specific, uh, let's say, pillar related or um, monitoring in, uh, indicators and indices, but this is a bit of different aspect. This is about the result framework. But I recognize that uh, we should perhaps shift away from this indicator terminology so to to be more streamlined and clear with the definitions and and thank you for the comment because we have to work on it and we will uh, come up with a better terminology for the results framework well the, the reason i'm mentioning this is because it's related to the early warning system so the early warning system is associated with the severity of the drought and severity of the drought is based on indicators so that's the reason why it is really very important. And for that reason, the British government asked us to pay attention, especially for the indicators, to be able to have an, a viable early warning system. So that's the importance of that. It's not something to, to leave it for, for tomorrow. It is something associated with, with the early warning system. You've got to be careful with the indicators. You can say, uh, we, have, we are going to have severe drought and in reality it isn't because the indicators are not robust enough so that's okay. what i wanted to highlight because what we work with with, uh, with government and uh, yeah they need something that comes with less uncertainty into predictions absolutely and i think the sendai framework has a, a strategic objective on the access to early warning and monitoring systems uh, related to disasters including drought and one of the indicators that they use is the existence of this early warning system. The second is the uh, people who can access. And we incorporated these indicators in the results framework because it's a must, I mean, for drought, uh, integrated drought management. It's a technology-based approach, meaning that without good monitoring and early warning system, practically it's impossible to implement the mitigation the, measures. The point here that the portal in the results framework, it does not, bring new it just maps what globally agreed indicators and alert that yes we should work on on the specificity because often we find indicators by many from different institutes from different partners really what if you need to dig in a bit on the framework part where you see this is not fao presenting a new framework of, of a, a result framework it's really what is globally agreed upon and that's when we take it from one event to another to to sharpen that and i think uh, uh, the specificity for for user is is something to be taken into account so that's i would like to mention that so we're not inventing things here okay. yeah. Sorry, we have to finish today because yeah. we have me and Ziad. We have to run to another meeting at one o'clock. We it's already one o'clock. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maher. Really, very interesting. Maybe we can have uh, for drought. I mean, we have one session later, uh, so maybe you can talk about this. is very interesting, and maybe we can put more information on this patrol. I mean, all uh, organization working in the region. I mean, if this allowed, I don't know. The, the drought is, 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 is public, as you see, as I mentioned, any interaction with the drought is possible. Uh, the contact, the information is there, so we'd be glad to, uh, mm -hmm. to do. As I mentioned, there's a lot we focus on 32 countries in terms of practices, in terms of, 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 of support to, to implementation of drought plans uh, that could go beyond. But the, the drought is, is a public platform from FAO side, yeah. Mm. Okay, Hisham. Yes. Uh, well, we um, we have a request from uh, Ms. Nerjus Zohrabi to talk a little bit on, uh, on what she's doing, but many colleagues are leaving, so maybe... I have to leave. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe in one minute, uh, and then we can schedule a presentation for her uh, next meeting. We have another meeting this year, so maybe I'm just quickly sorry, and we can... Sorry to, sorry to intervene. Sorry to intervene. Just to, to give justice to... Ms. Nerges to present adequately the work she's doing, maybe we can schedule her presentation in full for the next meeting, because many of us have another meeting on groundwater with yes. UNESCO and have to yes. leave. So <laughs> yeah. very, I'm really sorry for this. It was not in the agenda. So can we have the details of your um, presentations so that 
we can schedule it in the next cluster meeting, be it within this cluster or maybe one of the other clusters as well. Because I can see that gender issues are cross-cutting throughout the all the cluster uh, work. Would that work for you, uh, Ms. Nargis? You are muted, yeah. And not here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because I'm... giving you one minute is not going to help. It's not <laughs> going to help you, it's not going to help us. Okay. Uh, do you know, uh, I would like to share about the initiative that now we have in ICID about uh, establish a task force that was on empowering women in water resource management, encompassing a one wide range of topics. Uh, for example, the role of uh, women in management of water resources and environmental conservation, the role of women in adaptive of the climate change and uh, uh, the impact of climate change, promoting resilience uh, in the face of changing climate conditions, role of women in controlling and uh, mitigating the effect of extreme events, including flood and and the role of women in the management of water resources and environmental conservation and empowering women as the water leaders and decision makers. Through the establishment of uh, this task force uh, from ICID aims to harness the collective wisdom and capabilities of women to drive positive uh, change and foster sustainable uh, water resources management. And uh, mm, uh, to build women's um, adapt, uh, adaptability capacity, it's important to expand uh, managerial, technical, and financial support and access to the uh, crucial and uh, critical resources. And uh, uh, for this, uh, matter, uh, we would like to uh, have your participants uh, in this uh, initiative. If, uh, for example, follow Amy um, Scala, uh, um, AXA, and other uh, different independent and dependent organizations have different uh, experience in uh, gender in gender uh, activity in different parts. And if uh, we would like to share this uh, initiative to you and we ex extended it in the uh, 2020 ICID conference in India. Uh, we talk more about it in the India. And just uh, Ms. I want to share it to you. Yeah, Ms. Najas, I think this is very interesting, but as Mohammed said, it could be very useful mm -hmm. to have a dedicated uh, time as all of as I have another meeting. So uh, let's let's maybe reschedule it. Thank you for, very much. And thank you to all of you for being here. And uh, thank you, Meher, for your availability. This was very insightful. Uh, and uh, see you next time, inshallah. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.